everyone for the uh, for for the patience here. This was uh, obviously, as you could probably tell by the poor cable management and uh, loading and unloading and whatnot. Um, yeah, setup is a little, at least on the open source way of doing things, is a little bit on the convoluted side. But maybe uh, maybe by a little a little bit of explanation, well, we could probably see how the um, how the paid solutions of a DJ setup whether it's a mobile setup or, you know, at a club or wherever is actually, especially when you're dealing with uh, digital tracks and digital control. So I need to even introduce myself. I'm Charlie. I'm a FreeBSD committer in ports um, doing desktop stuff. But today we're obviously talking about, well, an application of desktop, which is DJing and music production. So, um, so yeah, as, as we can see, we have a little bit of a spread of equipment um in the middle there we have a dj mixer and then on the sides you've got two turntables um, you could also they could also be two cdjs this could be just a one all-in-one controller that requires a laptop to kind of you know do its thing and then um but with this setup we have some uh, we have some auxiliary equipment particularly with usb with usbs and um yeah today we're kind of going to go over more of the, more of kind of the, the flow graph of it all, um, you know, so that, you know, cause you know, we have all this stuff cause like when, when you use something that is a bit more commercial, like Serato or record box or, or even just the, just the typical, you know, pioneer equipment that has it all, you know, has all this stuff a little bit nicer than this internally, it's going to be something more like this. So we're going to kind of go over the flow graph here, and then maybe we'll we'll kind of go over a little bit of of you know a little bit of how you know this whole vinyl control thing works. Uh, maybe we'll show you a little bit of a uh, a little production Easter egg. Um, I, I did make I did make something uh, just in 90U earlier this morning, uh, just kind of on a whim, but it was also maybe slightly you know inspired by a little bit of liquid courage from last night. We'll see. So, so here we go. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't have any slides. It's, it's pretty much just like once I, I'll, I'll draw a little bit and then we'll transition over back over to the screen, basically. All right. So, so we have. So, I, I did say in kind of my description, we're going to have a little bit of a flow graph discussion. So let's start off with, you know, we got mixer. Four, four channel mixer kind of kind of in the middle of things and um, you know you got you got to hook it up to power somehow um, let's see so then we've got we'll draw two turntables or CDJs or whatever you got okay so Normally, well, before you connect anything, they're obviously disconnected. If you try to, you know, turn the turntable on and and uh, spin something, spin some real vinyl, and not this time code thing, the only thing you can hear is um, when you hold your ear down to the down to the cartridge. That's how you hear the music. But of course, that's not really that's not that fun. That's not much fun when you got to hold your ear to the cartridge and barely hear your uh, hear all the definitions of of sound. So you got to you got to put some speakers to it or amplify it or do whatever to actually make it sound good. And um, so with the with the turntable, normally they are RCA outputs um, of the phono, um, basically with the phono um, outputs. So that means you have to have an external preamplifier to actually boost the signal a little bit so that the speakers can actually, you know, do its thing and it doesn't sound like, you know, in it, so that the, the volume is somewhat appropriate and let's get this power management off that might be a good idea so in this case in this case it doesn't really matter a lot of newer turntables also have line output as in they have a built-in preamplifier so that you don't have to you know figure out a figure out an external one but um but a lot of folks they still prefer to use an external preamplifier because they're used to that thing they actually, but but also just kind of a modicum of control, just like how some of us like to build our own ports from source, um, build our own ports from source, build our own operating systems from source. So, 
in, in this it, in this case it doesn't really matter so so here what we're going to do we're going to connect well since we're since we're talking digital um, digital stuff you know controlling digital tracks because not everything is released on on physical media or vi specifically vinyl anymore or even acetate dub plates for that matter um, you got to figure out some other way because if you're going to have a time code a time code record like this if you actually play it all you hear is just like this whiny noise thing and that's not really much fun i, I don't i don't think we want to mix that necessarily or even listen to that as a um as a as an audio file for that matter so let's let's pretend this is a just pretend this is just some computer tower here i can't draw as you can tell and um so what we're going to do we're actually going to we're going to load up the time code vinyl on the uh, on the turntable and then we're actually going to connect the turntable directly to the machine and we're going to do the same thing with the other turntable connected directly to the machine it could be a usb connection it could just it could be well it'll most likely be a usb connection but really um you figure out a way if the turntable only has a has an rca out you figure out a way to convert that rca out into some kind of input that your machine can recognize whether it's usb or some usb audio interface or you have some where you have multiple internal sound cards that have you know 3.5 millimeter jacks or whatever you know just connect it connect to the machine somehow and uh so so that'll that'll pipe your time code signal in then in your uh, in your dj software where or whatever software you've got which i'll go over a little bit momentarily um you, you select your digital track and then you just connect you connect the computer back out to the mixer and we got two of these so let's just say this is channel one channel two and same same deal figure out some kind of interface between computer and um and the mixer Usually, it's also going to be an RCA, you know, RCA interfaces on the mixer, which is actually what I have here. So, so in this in this physical, you know, so th that that's just a little a little flow graph of how it works. And of course, I've kind of left out, you know, speakers and other auxiliary equipment because, you know, whatever. Um, it's kind of obvious if you uh, if you don't have any speakers, well, you have bigger problems. So. So here with this, uh, how we have it set up physically, of course, you've got mixer in the middle. Of course, you got you got to hook everything up to some kind of power source. And over here in the back, so the here, this here is channel one. Over here is channel two. And this here, and then this is the speaker. This is the master output on the RCAs, but there are also two more outputs. Uh, one of them is a booth output, and then the other one is, is a... Um, is the record slash broadcast um, we don't have to go into too much detail of course obviously we have the we have these speakers hooked up to the master output and for channel one and channel two these actually have two rca interfaces stereo rca interfaces each um, we actually have both of these so there's one that's phono which means if you hook up if you hook up a turntable without a preamp um, this mixer has its own preamplifier and it'll boost the signal up to line level but we actually have it hooked up have these hooked up to the line um, the line part of it so that it's not going through preamp the signals already at line level so we don't need to you know boost it up again or else it's going to sound like crap um, clipping and everything else for that matter um, we have it hooked up to line because what it's actually coming in from is two of these these are uh these are usb audio interfaces um they have rca they have rcas on them so we have the usbs going into my laptop and then so these have these have um stereo stereo inputs and outputs i only have the outputs connected so the outputs on the usb audio interface going into the mixer and and then of course the USB goes into the goes to my laptop, and then 
as for the turntables, I have the turntables. So these turntables, a bit newer, of course, they have a USB, their own USB audio interface. So they have a USB, um, they have a USB B in the back, and I just hook the USB directly into the laptop. Um, in an ideal world, which I kind of tested a little bit uh, earlier in the week, in an ideal world, you could just, you should be able to just roll with just two of these USB audio interfaces because you've got, you have a stereo output and a stereo input. And in theory, you should be able to just connect the RCA, RCA outputs from these turntables to the RCA inputs of these USB audio interfaces. But in my own uh, testing, um, at least with the stock FreeBSD uh, sound setup. Maybe we'll have some different results if, um, if we have a little bit more advanced patch baying capability, as, as in Jack. I've never tested Jack, uh, but if we have a little bit more advanced patch baying um, abilities, we wouldn't have this problem. But the problem was, the problem was that when I hooked up the hooked up the phono out, well, or really the RCA outputs from the turntables directly into the, into the USB audio interface and then pipe that into, of course, my DJ software and selected my digital tracks and, and whatnot. What actually got passed into the mixer from that RCA out on the USB interface was both the timecode signal and the track I selected. And yeah, problem. So. Thankfully, thankfully speaking, these have U.S. You know, in the absence of patch baying, um, thankfully these turntables have a USB, their own USB audio interface, and I'm able to just use the USB itself. Um, but yeah, so that's that's just how I have it set up. Of course, um, when you're using some slightly more commercially, you know, commercially oriented equipment or commercially oriented setups, like like I know pioneers and. Um, Pioneer equipment especially, they actually have their mixer, a lot of their mixers and a lot of their like CDJs and I think their turntables as well. Um, they present themselves as USB HID devices, not necessarily MIDI. MIDI. Um, I haven't played around with those uh, because they are very, very pricey <laughs> amongst other things. And we're trying to, I, I'm, I'm personally trying to go for not too pricey on, a, on something like this. So... But yeah, so that's the, that's really the flow graph, and I actually forgot to mention, please feel free to interrupt and, you know, for questions and whatnot, if someone is monitoring IRC or Discord or, or um, anyone's on the stream throwing tomatoes at me, yes. Um, okay, so let's transition over to the software. Why do I want to do this? So I, I have the software here um, on my on not the projection so what you're seeing what you're seeing on the screen that's actually my tmux um that's a terminal so i just that was me just trying to see you know what goes into what so so this laptop comes with goes from dsp0 through dsp4 those are kind of its built-in interfaces dsp4 is really what i use for like you know just the built-in speaker and whatnot so once you get past DSP4, you see here's DSP5, and they, they all show up as this Burr Brown from Texas Instruments USB audio codec thing. Obviously, uh, these are, well, on, on the outside, these don't look like Texas Instruments devices, but perhaps they just uh, they just pretend to be, or m maybe they do have the, the TI chip, who knows. Um, but regardless, uh, these are just stand, these are, as long as they show up as your standard, you know, USB audio interfaces, you can do a lot. You, you can do a lot with, um, you know, beyond just DJing, like, you, you can do a lot just in, ge in general with, like, you know, list just general speaker use, general mics, you know, just, you can do basic stuff, you can go fancy, um, as, long, as long as they show up as USB device. So, so let's see, what do I have set up here? So, we have five through eight. And when I go into, you know what, let's, so I'll pull the mix, pull the DJ software over here. So, so what we'll do is, uh, I can get the preferences dialog over as well. 
Okay, so first thing you'll want to do when you open up, you know, any sort of any sort of like or like sound or multimedia program that is a bit more advanced than just rhythm box or web browser or whatever you listen to or even VLC for that matter. Um, you'll definitely want to double check and configure your audio interfaces, you know, what they're supposed to be doing, what the rules are, things like that. So this is the first sound hardware is obviously the first um, first page in the mix dialog or settings dialog here and ignore that part I, th this is just me noodling around so what we're doing here with at least with this setup is digital vinyl control you know using timecode vinyl to control digital tracks i've repeated that too many times and so in order to do that you need to configure you need to configure your turntable inputs and then your mix outputs back into an external mixer or you can mix itself actually has its own software mixer but that's not as fun as using a physical external one, so we'll ignore that part. A, a lot of this, a lot of these details, if you go on the Mix website, that's Mix with three axes. They actually describe that in the, like literally what I'm talking about in their um, in their documentation. There's like an entire section um, dedicated to vinyl control, but they have like some ex some example setups, example setup diagrams in there too. So, but what I have here, so. So we need to get the timecode signal from the turntables with the timecode vinyl, of course. We need to get we need to get that into mix. We need to get that into mix. So you need to figure out which of these USB devices are the turntables and which ones are your other USB interface that is going back into the mixer. So in this case, um, in this case, DSP six. So let's go back to the Let's go back to the terminal. If I can get the pointer back to where it was. There we go. Let's go back to the terminal here. So vinyl control one ended up being DSP six. So dev PCM six, this description is this burr this full burr brown from Texas Instruments USB audio codec. Um, it, it, it it can be a little bit you know, not obvious when everything is kind of dis like named. Th their descriptions are like almost identical, so you kind of have to play around with like to to see which one is which. But eventually, you'll get it. Especially if you only have like two decks, you'll if you if you figure out it's the wrong one, you'll just switch it over to the other one. So, so and, and it's the same deal with the uh, with the other USB audio interface. So, so DSP six is this, is this turntable on my left, probably your right. DSP six is this turntable. And then that's DSP five, the other turntable. So you figure that out and, and actually verify that it all works. You have, um, you can actually see the quality of the timecode signal. This is like a little calibration thing, but I also have the calibration display or the signal quality displayed um, enabled on the little spinny thing in the main interface. But I'll give you a little example here on how this works. So we're going to put the needle on on uh, DSP six, and you can see um, you can see that. So this, if, if like I said, when you listen to, if you try to listen to this thing via just audio, in fact, you know what? Let's let's have a listen on audio. Let's have a listen. So I will pass through. I'll do a pass through here, and we can and we can all just kind of cover our ears, maybe, and more tomatoes. And oh, I need to. Oh, something is not plugged in. <laughs> something might not be plugged in then. Um, it's all good. Either something is not plugged in, or I did it wrong, or, or something like that. But um, live too. <laughs> um, so I just want to make sure that we actually have this. All right. So something is connected, but uh, we might have to redo something. They're all connected. So here, so so that's the thing. It's like we go back to output here. So this might be uh, 
Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, five and six are the turntables. But we have... So that means this is probably eight. And that's probably seven. Again, this is all... You kind of have to play around with it because they're all kind of... Yeah. Yeah. All right. Something is also still misconfigured here. Yeah, yeah, but that was not the that was not the uh, pass through. That was not the pass through. Let's try that one now. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's just going in through the uh that's just, you know, directly into the laptop. Yeah. Yeah. So Yeah, so these are all these are definitely all connected. So Yeah. These are definitely Let's try the other one then. need to pass through that one as well. Well. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Sometimes uh yeah it was it was it was definitely working in ninety U, so if anyone saw the, saw me testing it out in ninety U it was definitely uh it was definitely working, but something is funky here. Something's definitely funky, but, but, um, but yeah, um, in the meantime, in the meantime, so I did also say this was also about the, uh, the music production and I kind of, kind of a little, little blip compared to the, the DJing part, especially considering that I was kind of expecting, you know, expecting the signal to come through, but we'll do the production as well so so the um when it comes to the audio production there's a whole bunch of uh, digital audio workstations out there a lot of them are designed for linux but they work perfectly fine on freebsd as well the one i use is called lmms um i'll drag the window over so this was so we'll open so this was the easter egg that i was working on earlier um in 90u um, maybe slightly hungover, slightly drunkenly, I don't know, one of those things, but, um, yeah, just a very, very basic little, I mean, I, I just kind of noodle around with a little bit of, uh, percussion here, and, um, yeah, so when you first start LMMS, it's, um, the, it actually asks you, like, what kind of, um, what kind of audio API that you're going to use. In this case, I actually selected Pulse Audio, because I, because Cinnamon makes you use Pulse Audio, um, but on, um, Back on Mix, I was using OSS. I could also use OSS on this too. I mean, considering that we in FreeBSD actually imp actually uh, expose the OSS API, even though the even though kind of the back end is you know, you know the the actual back end is kind of homegrown and and whatnot. Um, as long as it exposes the OSS API, everything works. So. Yeah, so that's um yeah, this was just me noodling around. They have they have th it comes with a lot of um a lot of samples like, you know, drum samples, bass samples, instrumentation what have you. Um they have a whole bunch of other like tutorials, documentation on how to use this thing if anyone's actually interested in uh noodling around themselves. Um but this was this was just me kind of kind of messing around and um I had to include a sample of of uh of my friend in here. Um, just you know, on this on the sample track. So um, obviously, my my speaker I don't think is uh, it's not going to come through on on there. So this is going to be, you know, if I actually I I did export this into the DJ software, so I was actually going to load it up, load it up and actually play it, but um, something's wrong. <laughs> um, maybe uh, maybe you know when, whatever. 
in the meantime, um, like I was saying, feel free to interrupt or ask questions or throw tomatoes if, any, if, if anyone has anything while we uh, figure out the rest of the, uh, figure out the other half going back to the mixer. Which one is being ported over? Uh, I've never heard of so the the question was uh, we're showing LMMS, but do I know of Reaper being ported to the BSDs? I personally never heard of Reaper, so I cannot say. Um, but um, but as if it works with Linux, there's a good chance it works on FreeBSD at least. Like so, there's another there's another one that I was that I was briefly messing around called Z Rhythm. Um, it, there's no H in that in that word, by the way. Um, I, I've only messed around with it briefly, but it also does work. Um, that one has a slightly more involved, um, you know, pre-setup um, in terms of like, you know, buffering and latency and whatnot, which um, which actually brings me back to mix here. So the other thing with this with this vinyl control, you definitely want to make sure your uh, your latency is as low as possible. Um, you definitely want to be, you know, like the the max I would say the max latency that you want, if I go back into the settings, max latency that you want is this 10.7 milliseconds. If you go really, if you go anywhere above it, um, you're, you know, especially if you're going to scratch or cue on this thing, it, it's just going to feel weird. But even when you, like, but you also notice it, like, let's say I have, like, a real vinyl one here, and you put your ear down to the cartridge, and you have it set to pass-through mode, you will notice a slight delay between what you'll hear from the cartridge and what actually comes back out. Um, you know, ju just because it is going through your, uh, it is going through digital audio interfaces, and that does have a little bit of a processing, you know, latency. I mean, that's why we call it latency. So. Have I tried to what? Um, I haven't. I haven't really messed around with Jack too much myself, um, so I can't really say. I, 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 I. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, though, it's like, especially when we're on FreeBSD, it's like that's just another another layer to slow things down. When our when our like technically homegrown system that exposes NOSS interface is like already pretty good, so it's like. But yeah, th this ten point seven this ten point seven milliseconds thing. It's like, like, yeah, like, yeah, you'll notice it, like, when you when you compare listening to the cartridge to what comes out, but when you actually cue or scratch or whatever, um, it's hard. It's pretty hardly noticeable. Like, if if I change it to like the twenty one millisecond thing, that's when it gets weird. But um, but ten point seven, ten point seven is definitely definitely doable with just the stock with just the stock setup. Anyone else? while we figure this out. Um, so I haven't, I haven't like produced much yet, um, but, but of the little that you just saw kind of on, on that LMMS, that was, that was just me just like putting in, like just putting in random samples, like, you know, rhythmically. And um, cause that, that's really how a lot of the electronic music that I listen to is just kind of produced anyway. Like, yeah, like you'll have, you'll have certain folks who do have like, you know, real instrumentation. They'll probably take samples from like, you know, acoustic music, of course, and just kind of mess around with that. Um, but right, right now for me, it like, that was just, that was just the built in or, or like the samples that came with LMS. And then, and then I just tacked on, tacked in a little bit a little sound bite for my friend in there. So the other thing, so the other thing that you have to keep in mind that I forgot to, mixer TUI. So this here, this mixer text user interface thing, um, you do also need to kind of keep in mind as well. Because sometimes the, 
sometimes that's not set properly. S especially when you just first plug it in. But at least you can see what's what. Do you see something on the second deck? Maybe. It is not. It's just feedback. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's fine. No, I was I was looking at the mixer. Looking at the mixer, but we could do that too. Oh, here we go got something okay all right so that's okay so we have this backwards a little bit that's fine but that's the time code signal that is a time code signal if you listen to it just uh, yeah always make sure so I had it right before clearly or maybe I didn't there we go. Okay, so yeah, now we have it set right, and uh, we can load up. We can load up our Easter egg. So I'll cut that down. Okay. So normally, also with um, with DJ, and you'll have like there's like another headphone. There's another headphone attachment for you know. So we have Q buttons on here, and um, and if you hit the Q button, that's uh, and, and when you have the volume level set all the way down. That's when you can. Um, that's when you can kind of listen in on your own headphones to make sure that everything's kind of synced properly or whatever, whatever levels you want to adjust before you bring it up to the house. So um, I just need to rescan the library. It is in here somewhere. There it is. Right. Turn off the pass through. So this is just a little little 32 bar thing that I just uh, just kind of noodled around with. So. Excuse the feedback, Patrick. <laughs> so we have a little bit of a... So it all started when I was born. If anyone was listening on stream, if you know, you know. Yeah, so that doesn't have... I'm going to spin this back here. I'm going to, I'm going to rewind this. But... Sometimes I can take a little bit to rewind, so I'll, I'll, I'll bring it back to the beginning. Ooh. Very imperfect instrument, these, uh, these turntables. So that's what, that's actually why a, a whole bunch of folks, you know, they, that's why they use CDJs or something, something that's not, something like, that's got a tone arm or something like that. Just because they are very sensitive to positioning and, and um, you, get, you gotta keep these horizontal and, and everything like that, so. But yeah, like, when it comes to the whole, you know, scratching, cueing, like, it works fine. Forwards, backwards, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, so that's pretty much, 
that's pretty much your vinyl control. Obviously, when so, so I do have when I was born. clearly. Um, so I do have some real vinyl in my bag. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bust that out. You know, just just in terms of time because we are cutting into lunchtime and I'm sure we want to eat something. So um, so yeah, that that's that's really much it. Um, I actually have the one other thing. I actually have the waveforms disabled. Like, to th this usually would display, like, a live waveform sort of deal. I actually have it disabled, so I can have the kind of a more authentic, um, authentic vinyl, you know, experience. But I will show the, uh, I will show something here. So, so if I go back to the beginning one more time. kind of you kind of see how it kind of goes it kind of goes you know through the, the the bpm detection was a little bit off this was actually 140 bpm but sometimes the auto bpm detection on this thing is off like it uses an external library and everything so so yeah um yeah if any if, unless anyone else has any further questions or inquiries or tomatoes to throw so it all started you. when i was born thank you very much Oh, I do?